frame. <laughs> Here we are. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Solution Sunday on this Independence Day in the United States of America. And let me find how to turn off the feedback from Facebook. There we go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a new, another edition of Solution <laughs> Sunday. I am Lisa Warner. I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. And I teach you how to be fine, physically independent, how you and your body can be fully independent that you can create your own health and well-being all by yourself. <laughs> and my special guest today is Deanna Courtney, a practitioner of German New Medicine. And although we have different approaches, we both teach the same principles. So welcome, Deanna. Let me have you introduce yourself to my tribe. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody, for showing up on this Sunday in any recording that you find. Um, uh, so I'm Deanna Courtney, and I'm kind of a neighbor of Lisa's. We're in the Adirondacks here in New York. And I met Lisa when um, I discovered her book through a mutual friend. And as I was reading, I'm like, she knows like what I'm learning. And it was really upfront when I, when I was learning German new medicine. And so the premise of what I teach German new medicine is that the body is always going through these processes that we've been taught are diseases, but aren't at all diseases. They're just natural processes of the body adapting from stressors or biological shocks that we've been through, fancy, fancy name for some specific terminology that we use. Um, and so I read it and I was like, oh, she's lived it. So we just started doing some, some things together and um, putting some missing pieces together that she had and I had, and we just went, oh, we're talking the same thing. You use different language, but it's the same thing. Our bodies are amazing and it's not what we're being taught. So our goal in today is, it really is Independence Day, but not their version of what independence is, like New York, US, aren't we wonderful? No, we're gonna just kind of change, change up and do a little um, interactive, what does independence really mean to each of us? Because it really is, here I am in my room running my own show. Lisa's in her room running her own show. We're independent, but we're also great collaborators uh, sharing um, wonderful, wonderful, empowering information. So it'll be a little fun and just a little fair warning. Our brains are, <laughs> there's a lot going on in the world. And so if we're misspeaking and just like kind of a little off, it's okay. So that means that it's okay if you do that too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's some shifting going on um, energetically in the world and I don't know, but I can definitely feel it. And usually I don't feel things like that, but yeah. like just right now it feels like there's this magnetic energy over my head that's like, okay what's going to come out next so we're just going to pray and stay all connected and just you're going to get the gist of what we're um, sharing today great points because there actually is a major solar flare activity happening right now which does affect the electromagnetic field around our heads <laughs> funny because i'm in as many of us are some woo woo groups and a lot of times they're talking literally and figuratively over my head. I'm like, oh, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. But this one, this one I do. <laughs> and yes, it also may be part in me resolving uh, a long standing uh, um, moving around the world and not <laughs> the state. I haven't had home in a while. So I've recently resolved that and I'm now creating my own space in actually my childhood home, 
which is very exciting. So I'm resolving some, um, some situations. So that always involves the brain. So that too is playing a role in how I present today. Which is perfect. <laughs> I have a line in my, in a tagline that I use on my emails. I'm perfectly perfect. I have a phrase. You are perfectly perfect for what you've been through. Absolutely. And it's Everybody so true. Always perfect. doing the best they can in every single moment. And our bodies are supporting us in every single moment. And now we just have to get the the mind and the body working on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And most of the work that I do is helping people rewire what they've been taught and programmed. Yes. From their families to the culture to the TV, um, their the family. The educational beliefs, system, the medical system, doctor, the governments, the legal systems. We've yeah. been programmed and programmed and programmed for yeah. sure. So get ready for some independence. That's right. <laughs> I'd like to change the, the, the spelling of it because independence, I always spell wrong because I want to put dance at the end of it. There you go. And so I make a formal announcement that forever and ever, amen, I'm going to change independence, dance, dense which is think of the word it's dense it's low energy to dance doesn't that make sense absolutely when so, we are independent we can dance all we want so it is our own independence day to day Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yes. i second that <laughs> We love that. <coughs> and, you know, I love the. I love that you were talking about. You know how you were feeling the the energies in your in your head, and you know lots of stuff coming up. You know we have we are in these. We're as we are in this process of ascension on the planet. We are being upgraded all the time, and we've got their major um, waves of light that come into this planet specific there are codes in that light which are literally rewiring our dna mm -hmm. and we are being upgraded all the time just like computers get upgraded and you know when that happens we can feel very very off <laughs> you know when the when a computer goes through an upgrade it goes it's offline like we can't access it so a lot of times you go, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Like, I don't feel right. I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling weird. Like, I don't know what to do. Well, breathe through it and realize that we're getting upgrades all the time. You know, mm -hmm. we, we're so programmed to beat ourselves up and worry about, I'm having an anxiety attack or I'm feel, you know, I'm guilty or I'm worried or I'm ashamed. And we keep beating ourselves up for stuff that we don't need to beat ourselves up over. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the, the phrase that you used, and it's part of the work that I do when somebody calls with a symptom, you had said, oh no, what's wrong with me? And when we really understand what's going on with the body, we can, I mean, usually because we're human beings, we do say that like, whoa, <clears throat> oh, I have a frog in my throat. Oh, I have like my head's off. What's, what's wrong? And then when we understand and we've been reprogrammed to know, oh, not what's wrong, but what's right. Something's going yeah. on because I teach that every symptom is either trying to get you through a stressor, a shock in your life, or if the shock's over, it's trying to repair, help your body go through this natural adaptation process. So when we understand that every symptom has a purpose, and if you have a pen and paper down uh, in front of you, write that down. Every symptom has a purpose to try to help you get through and resolve a conflict or help your body go through an adaptation process. In fact, that goes on in, in two phases of, of the natural healing. 
Um, so that's a critical piece is as soon as you're, you have some, some shock in the world or even physically, you, your first response usually, I call it the first breath, second breath, the first response is, why, well, oh, I can't even think, like, what's wrong? And then, hold on, there's the second breath. Wait, 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 every symptom has a purpose. No, I don't know what's going on. Okay, can I just sit with this? Can I just be okay with this? Because what happens when you do that is the resistance stops, the as Lisa teaches, the magnetics change from fear to trust. And anytime you sit in the place of trust and my shirt says, faith requires, what does it say? Trust, oh, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about trust, but yes, faith is knowing that all will be okay. And it really requires trust. So, Again, I'll just go through that little simple process of we have a shock in life, whether it's an external shock or it's something physically going on and we go, oh, what's that? That's the first breath. That's the shock breath. And then we can say, oh, no, no, no. I have new knowledge that everything is purposeful. All is well. So that second breath is to accept what's going on as helping you in some fashion and you don't even have to know what it's doing but if you just sit and accept and trust and then turn the love in you know the love that you give out by day you just say time out i can't give it out right now i'm going to turn it back into me and then to wherever the physical symptom is, or if it is an external, you can send love out to that. So I guess that's, and this is actually is coming out right now. I've never, you've never heard me do this, have you, Lisa? <laughs> um, but yeah, if it's internal, you just turn the love back into yourself and trust, love and trust and breathe through whatever go is going on in your body. And if it's external, you just love and trust whatever is going on there. It's gonna, it's on purpose. It's it's usually not about you, and it's gonna be all okay. Absolutely. That's why they say love is the greatest healer. Mm. It is energy. Mm -hmm. And when we it is who and what we are, we are love itself. Mm -hmm. God, source, creator, all that is, whatever word you want to use, it is a, it is a quantum field of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And we are each a individuated, independent aspect of that love. We are not separated from that field, but we are that. And we have the ability to utilize our love, our energy, and direct it in any direction. And when we, and love has no resistance. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no resistance in love. But when we're fighting or worrying or stressing or judging, or there's a lot of resistance there. Mm -hmm. And it's that resistance that builds up in our bodies. And as long as we've got resistance being built up in our bodies, our bodies are going to respond by going, hey, you know, they're going to change form. They need some love to open up and function properly. Mm -hmm. But we've all been programmed that we have to do this, or we have to do that, or you can't do this, or don't ever do that. Why did you do that? What's wrong with you? You should know better. All that resistance that we have been taught. Now we carry it around. And I think of a perfect set of toddlers that just are living life love i did daycare and so my favorite ages were between two and three because they've figured out how the body works they figured out like how to kind of speak and they just always speak the truth and 
their truth, their perspective, and they're just the most real um, in purest sense of life. And we've just been picked away at from that. Yeah. And like I, I, when I get into these conversations with, with other people, I ask the question, at what point can we stop dancing like a two-year-old at three? Like, and, and it's cute. We all know like, oh, they're so cute. Like, is it not okay at five-year-olds? Are they still cute? Or at seven or at 10, they're still cute. 13, <gasps> something happens, like something happens. And then throughout, I don't know, 50s, 60s, 70s, then maybe 80 year olds can start dancing because they're cute again. Like they can be free. Like just stop and think, because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. We judge the human people. They judge, oh, she shouldn't be dancing like that. Um, but that is my true spirit. I had nieces that used to think I was drunk all the time. <laughs> and then they spent three days with me and they're like, oh, you're just happy. <laughs> so I want to make a bumper sticker. I'm not drunk. I'm just happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, you know, life becomes so much. <laughs> happy crisis. <laughs> Real happy crisis there. Yeah. yeah, you know, when we're when we're kids, we're free. You know, at two and three years old, we're just free. We're not hoarded into going to school from this eight, this time to this time, and we're not on a schedule, and we're just free to be. So we can dance and play and sing and have tea parties with our angels and invisible friends, and you know it's completely natural and normal. But then we're taught that now, now you're now you're four years old. Now you have to go to preschool now you're five years old you got to go to kindergarten and you know now you now you're on a schedule and then mm -hmm. you only are free in the summertime somewhat <laughs> yeah and yeah being just, away at. yeah our freedom really <laughs> truly gets eroded starting at a very early age so i'm curious we lisa and i talked about this we want to get a little bit of um involvement we taught today's independence day um what does that mean to you because we want to be able to um inspire you um so in the chat if you can um just kind of put in the chat uh what independence means to you personally Communitively, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Worldwidely, Lee. <laughs> Is Lee in the office? Is Lee in the room? <laughs> um, yeah, we're at a disadvantage. We're not sure how many people are on right now. So, um, if if you can just share in the chat, just what what uh, independence means to you, and maybe. <clears throat> So I'm moving into my childhood home, as I said. So while we're waiting for some commentary, um, I have this 1930s dictionary. And um, I was just curious at the, the definition of independence, but I've never, I don't know, I wasn't inspired by books as a child. Um, I was never like brought to a book that was like, wow, this is really cool. I was always just made to read them. So that, right. that kind of, but most recently in the last 20 plus years, I found, found my books that I just, that's how I start the day. So I never read the preface of a dictionary and I just, I wanted to share two, um, the first two paragraphs in this, 1930s um, book. Um, in order that a dictionary should be suited to the popular demand for such a work, it ought to possess the three important qualities of accuracy, completeness, and convenience. It must be accurate, for misinformation is worse than no information at all. Sound knowledge is wealth but unsound knowledge 
has no value whatsoever. When I read that, I was like, that is very powerful in this day and age when we're, we're being told so many things. And what is knowledge? Like, what is knowledge? Um, the German New Medicine that I teach is also called, um, they're changing the names. It was discovered by Dr. Hammer, who really should at some point win some award because it really yeah. is the new biology. The, there's a lot of names, the sacred, um, the sacred, ooh, losing a word, separation mm -hmm. conflict in full, <laughs> um, the sacred knowledge, the sacred something. Anyway, um, makes sense. German, um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to, mm -hmm. there's a whole blank spot here. <laughs> so but knowledge is something that you have that nobody can take away. That inner knowing. Yes, the inner, which, which opens up the door to inner knowing. So a lot of people that come to me and they're like, okay, I have a symptom. What does this mean? After I explain how the biology of the body works through these five biological laws that Dr. Hammer discovered, they usually say something like, I always knew that. I just didn't have any proof that I knew that. So this German new medicine, this five biological laws of nature is how we work. We have a shock. It affects the brain. It affects the body. We adapt during that to try to like run away from the tiger. <laughs> Used to be that we were just running away from tigers, mm -hmm. but now there's so many more tigers, <laughs> mm -hmm. perceived tigers, perceived fears. Um, so those shocks, um, people knew that, whoa, that was really altering who I was. It changed my behavior. It changed this. And then when it was over, I didn't know. I thought it was over. I should be healthy. But they don't realize that there's the second phase of healing that says right now we have to do some repair work. And right now you can't be going to run a marathon. That's just the bottom line. <laughs> so really? speaking of shocks right now, my cat just ran through like this. There's <laughs> some neighborhood fireworks going oh. on and animals oh. get so scared, a scare yes. fright, a fear in the territory. Yep. Um, so I think she just ran down to the, the cellar to, to go into her safety. So just that, why would she run? run through the room all of a sudden. That's not normal. No, for this circumstance, it is. Exactly. Um, and so then so tomorrow or the next day, she may exhibit some sort of a symptom. She does. She has this chronic wheeze because whenever she is shocked by noise, it triggers this. And I'm not saying the, the first time she had this was fireworks, but mm -hmm. I know her childhood and it was big animals and kids that had ADHD that went to her like, oh. I'm gonna get you. And she was just this little fur ball. So she has what we call tracks and triggers mm -hmm. to that. So when she's laying and she's, it's just her way. She now wheezes, she has a wheeze. And it's just her adaptation program. And it's hard to work with animals. Um, and if anybody out there loves animals, I would love to find somebody to start working and helping animal owners because I help human beings and sometimes animal owners. Um, but yeah, it's the way our, our body works. And um, well, it's interesting because animal bodies and human bodies we're all built on the same blueprint. <laughs> they all work the same way, which is what is amazing to me about, well, not amazing at all. Like it makes complete perfect sense is that we're all built on the same blueprint. And what Dr. Hammer discovered was this blueprint. And what the, it's a universal, the universal laws of how the body works. And how do we know that they're universal laws? 
because they are 100% consistent. They never change, they never vary. And this is what we need to talk about too, because in you know, human laws change all the time. <laughs> and universal laws never change. So when we start to look at the difference between human laws, quote unquote laws. Yeah, I actually need a definition of that. What do you mean by that? Human laws, because to me, uh, when somebody uses law and maybe you're just going there, when a law, the word law <laughs> comes, there's, there's like, it is what it is, like it's law um, versus theory law, like mm -hmm. there, so yeah. yeah. Going. I mean, if you look at, I mean, just take it like a really simple example of zoning laws. Oh, okay. That's, you okay. know, zoning laws change at the whim of somebody's going to benefit from this law. Well, this law is in place. I can't benefit. So let me give some money and let, let's just change that law because that law is not convenient for me anymore. Right. right. You know? And, and even laws that we think are true laws <laughs> about disease how our bodies work we've just all we've all been taught that you know that diseases attack our bodies well do we have to fight back and we i have think to that's say, just a law i have to say that those are theories exactly like asian theory yes. is a theory mm -hmm. and by by scientifically um, if a theory is disproven once, it's out the door. Exactly. So if they say that <clears throat> this is the germ, this is the germ, and we suspect that this germ creates bronchitis, so this germ causes bronchitis, okay? Because that's the theory. So to test that, we would put this germ that we can actually hold, <laughs> we can hold it, and we would put it in 100, I'm just using that number, 100 healthy individuals. And this germ would create bronchitis in 100% of those people. If there is one exception, this germ does not create bronchitis exactly so that <laughs> hopefully you can read between the lines <laughs> <laughs> that is what we've been led to believe and exactly. we've been hoodwinked and that's why i use this simple example yes and um, for anybody that's just listening to this she's holding a bottle cap just as a little um visual, visual. That and this, but it, is bron yes and if i said that oh this creates bronchitis because we've had things in our house we've lived with groups of people that some people always get sick at the same time and then somebody never does but the theories out there says oh they have a healthier immune system well a contagion theory wouldn't even play with a healthy like if this was the germ it would get everybody yeah. because the germ gets everybody exactly if it's proposed so when you have the german new medicine knowledge you have the knowledge of the five biological laws and know that when germs are present in the body such as bacterias and yeasts and um what else we got out there viruses if they exist um they are our surgeons Yes, they are coming to our aid in the repair phase. Exactly. And so they're no, there on purpose to help the body. No coping. So we've been taught <laughs> that they're there to <laughs> harm the body, that they're causing harm to the body. So that's a yeah, very there's just a little misunderstanding. Different. Yeah. The mm. medical system is not very far off. They know they're in they're involved but they're just a little misunderstanding. They're like, they are there. And it's amazing that we have the technologies that can look inside the body and see what's going on inside the body. 
but they're just, they're looking at them like um, if there was a fire, they're looking at it like the fire engines because the fire engines are always there at the fire. They're looking at it as the fire engines cause the fire. They're not, they're not getting the upfront story, the story that happened a day before. Like we're in the repair process, we showed up because we gotta, we gotta fix, we gotta remove. Like we have the surgeons and it's amazing that we are actually paying. <laughs> like if I have an injury on my shoulder and I'm in the pain phase, the pain is in the healing phase, almost always there's a few exceptions but if you have pain on the body most often you're in the healing phase and so when i know that um i just lost my whole train of thought when i know that oh that my surgeons are coming out to do and i know that and i know that i'm going to have some days of healing i know that i'm going to be in pain and I know that then I'm, I'm going to also have a lack of mobility. Why would my body do that? Because it doesn't want you to move while we're in the repair. Or I could, so that process will take however long, depending on how long and stressful the, the conflict was. Or I can go, oh, I'm in pain. I need surgery. And what do they do? They cut into you. And they say, after the surgery, don't move your arm for two weeks. So they basically do what you're, they don't, maybe they do or don't know, but they do what your body was going to do anyway, but you just didn't understand that it was going to do that anyway. And we have a hard time staying still in the repair phase because we've been programmed. we got to go, we got to work, got to recover, blah, blah, blah. But it's so important to honor and trust what your body needs. And so as I look at how the body repairs itself and I look at our medical model, they're amazing because they're actually doing what our body does. So they got the principles, but they just don't understand that, oh, you guys can do that. I don't need to. Oh, I'm going to go out on my yacht. <laughs> they don't realize that they can actually go out on their yacht instead of doing surgery for you. <laughs> Would they have a yacht if they couldn't? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yes. Where did that yacht come from? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're just all learning together. We're learning together. So it, it looks like we don't have, I can't see. Actually, I just, I, I just refreshed my <laughs> Facebook page. We got a lot of comments. So, oh. So we have, um, we have Cece saying, good morning, beautiful souls. And Donna saying, hello, good morning. And Delbert, my dad, happy fourth, Lisa, oh, Indiana. Goodness. We've got Shannon and Michelle. And Michelle says, good morning, Flyer Deanna and Guru Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, we know what that means. To you too. And Cece, yes, my family thinks I didn't mature. <laughs> now I'm just so happy. <laughs> I love that. Yay! <laughs> and Cece says that um, for her, independence, to me, it means being me and feeling free to be discover me and author a kick-ass life. I love that. <laughs> mm. And we've got Lee Moet, free from the definitions and labels of others. Love that. Um, Donna, learning to trust in self. Absolutely. That definitely brings independence. Michelle, sovereign senior, ability to walk the earth freely, no fear, knowing I can do my own thing. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> Deanna, do you have a bronchial program going, Deanna? I do. <laughs> <Michelle>. And I'm, <laughs> who, who said that? Michelle. <laughs> Yay. Yes, I do. It's right here. So we're <laughs> moving out the unnecessary cells. Thank you, body. Thank you, body. You're doing great. <laughs> yes, the fear in the territory. And uh -huh. what's interesting is when I as when I when I teach German new medicine, when I teach and empower people to understand their body, 
it kind of helps me resolve my fear in the territory that people don't have this knowledge. Uh, that At least that's how I'm perceiving it because I keep catching myself coughing when I'm, when I'm teaching, whatever. It's just like, yay, 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 here we go again. So yeah, the fear in the territory being um, <clears throat> speechless, this is yeah. speechless. <laughs> I can speak my truth. Um, is the the germ and and all the wreck that it's caused in our world in the last year and a half the germ theory and the fear in the territory that everybody has because of getting it um so anyway yes i am resolving go on with the commentary because i can't get any of it yeah so and shannon says independence to me is living interdependently with the natural world includes humans where we honor cooperation, generosity, trust, and respect. Then we understand there is enough for everyone. Finally, independence to me means that we are all granted the freedom to live according to the natural laws of the universe that is for life and for love. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Yay, that's Shannon. Uh -huh. So is that is that the end or do you have some That's more the end for right now that i see <laughs> okay so back to the 1930s edition of the dictionary and i i i don't know it's kind of um i can't tell who who wrote this but i'll get it for anybody that wants to order this dictionary <laughs> um or come, <laughs> or come to my space that now will be like a training center um and sit in the quiet of the morning. So I'm going to independence, E-N-C-E, um, freedom from support or governance by others, a competency, self-reliance. Yeah, let me just read that one more time for those note takers. Freedom from support or governance, governance by others, a competency, self-reliance. Absolutely. And so for me, um, as I created my little meme for my backdrop today. It's Which we love, by the way, it says upyourvibe.us. It's all about freedom on a flag for anybody that can't, that's listening to this without the visual. It's not about red, white, and blue us being the most wonderful nation because we are just like every other soul on earth. We want to breathe fresh air. We want to drink fresh water. We want to eat good food. We want to be with up your vibe people. We want to be safe. There is no difference from any human being. We are all sovereign beings that are born with those rights. So when I get really passionate about German new medicine and teaching this before, I will say before very loudly, you get any disease, this ease. Um, because once you have the knowledge, you can apply it to every symptom of your body. And again, the principles are your body is never broken. Your body is always trying to get you to survive. Your body is always getting you to adapt. That's why we stand here with arms and legs where the crocodiles still are going in and out of the water with their eyes that are looking from <laughs> back <laughs> evolutionarily. We've, we've gone past where they are. So that is freedom, that is independence. And I don't have health insurance. I don't want health insurance. If I get run over by something, a mob, <laughs> a mob because I'm going the other way, <laughs> I wanna be like, maybe stitch me up, maybe, maybe set my leg, but for the most part, get me home because that's where I'm going to heal. Get me home surrounded by people that love me. That's where I'm going to heal the best. And give me clear thoughts so then I can know that 
okay, body, you're healing and going into the meditative state, which I'm not a good med meditator. I will just be the first one, but I'm practicing because you never know when I have to just like literally watch my skin heal or, and make it heal. Yep. We have that ability for sure. Yep. That is independence. I am not reliant on the medical system. Exactly. I have a farmer friend that I know what she does with her food and how she grows it. Yay. Yeah. Um, there are still some systems that we are reliant on, but this last year and a half ish has brought a lot of people together and looked at the broken systems. And so there's a lot of creative opportunities there now. So that's my little bit on freedom and independence. I love that because when, when I found myself facing can, quote unquote cancer, I was terrified of what was going on with my own body. And I was angry at my body and resentful of my body because I was I was doing, I had just, I had, I had gone through my, you know, the beginnings of my awakening process and I was doing all the inner work and, you know, like the more inner work I was doing, like the more stuff was showing up in my body. I was like, oh my gosh, like, why is my body crapping out on me now? Because I'm doing the inner work. Like, why, why is this happening to me? Like, I'm angry. I don't like this. What am I going to do? I'm feeling like a victim. I'm feeling this cancer thing is, was like this great, big, invisible enemy always on me. And like, no matter where I went, there it was. And, but I didn't want to go the medical route. Like the thought of doing chemotherapy or radiation was like, oh my God, no, 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 no. Like my body would just cringe. And I knew that that was my body going, no, don't do that to me. And it was like my inner guidance saying no. And I realized, you know, when I really thought it out, I was like, I was weighing out my options. What do I do? Like, I know that my body is designed to heal itself because every single time I've ever gotten a cut or a bruise or a scrape or a, a, a sprain or my body's always healed those things. So it was completely obvious to me that my body is designed to heal itself. And I was like, but, you know, from a disease like cancer, like why, why doesn't it work that way on the in, on the inner organ stuff? Like, I, and I was like, it, but it has to work that way because the universe isn't random. You know, like, why would the body heal my finger if I broke my finger, but not heal a tumor in my body? Like, there's got to be some way that the body heals itself. And I thought, you know, if I go the medical route and I have somebody else or something else do the healing for me this is going to show up again in some other way because i'm designed i need to be the master of my own life and the master of my own body and if i don't know how to operate my body morning kathy Holmeyer, thanks for joining i was like if i don't know how to operate my own body and get my own body to come back into balance i am going to be dependent on the system for the rest of my life. So that I believe was my declaration of independence. When I chose to declare trust for my own body, completely independent from the, the medical system, and I started depending on my own body to heal itself. And guess what happened, everybody? I live to tell the story. Here I am, better than ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that right there is the fifth biological law, is that when you move through these programs, you are stronger from the psyche perspective <clears throat> and on the organ level. I know that... Um, well, I, I can think of Kathy, and I know she'd be all right with me telling the story. Um, she had a heart program that was the overwhelm program. 
because she runs a retreat center. She runs a restaurant. She's the chef. She's the everything. And the overwhelm were the shocks every morning when she got different directives coming in from the powers that be saying, you got to do this, you got to do this, and mask up, and da, 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 da. And she was just like, and then people calling, calling, calling. So she was overwhelmed. So she was running this heart program that got pretty scary. And I remember us having a conversation as she was moving through the, the, the end of it. She's like, I can feel myself being stronger. Like I feel that my heart is stronger because the heart is a muscle. And I know Lee's on the, on the call and Lee has proven his story is he had a stroke. And after you have a stroke, you have to blah, 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 and you're going to be a victim and you're going to be in a wheelchair and all the stories. Well, he created a different story. And if you go to Lee Mawat, M-O-W-A-T-T, -T, I think, mm -hmm. correct me, Lee, in the messenger, um, you can see how he did not believe that story. He actually teaches people how to grow older and grow, which means to improve your muscles. He met, he met Helene, one of our little Up Your Vibe tribe, doing handstands in actually a GNM conference in Toronto, Ontario, a few years back. And that is just the proof of the body when you don't let the mind get in the way, when you don't allow the programming to say, oh, I believe that story. No, I'm going to make my story and how do I want to end up? And how do I want to navigate this? It's just understanding your body and getting out of the way, basically, because you really don't have to do anything because most symptoms are healing. So you don't need all the diets. I was going through my mom's books um, on the shelves and I just generally calculated thousands of dollars of books on all the theories of health and a lot of those I bought her prior to knowing GNM and when we know the GNM perspective it's like yeah we want to eat good food because that's our nutrition we want good energy around us because that is just good energy it's it's positive um but basically we rarely 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 have to do anything to intervene with the body. In fact, there's a, a figure that Dr. Hammer um, discovered after working with 40,000 people plus, obviously, is that I think it was 94% of the time, you don't have to do anything. You just don't have to panic. If you can prevent yourself from going into panic, you're gonna move through it. There's a few instances that where medical um, intervention is important when bleeding is involved and when you have certain cramps on certain body. Remember, this is the tip of the day. Um, all, all organ relays are in the brain. So if you have symptoms that are getting too intense, you can always ice your head. It will bring down the intensity. It won't stop the healing but it will bring it down. Because if you're going to be going through this much of healing and it's going to take seven days, let's just say, um, you, you use ice to slow it down because it's bearable. It might take another extra two days, but you move through it. Oh, that's, that's just like good. one tip. So don't, don't use that as your guide to your health. <laughs> That's <laughs> just one tip that will never fail you. You can never go wrong with icing your head. Uh -huh. So um, anyway, those are just a couple, couple little stories that um, will hopefully, um, hopefully and hopefully um, empower you to just understand your body and you're never broken and um, it's, you don't ever have to turn something on it's doing the right thing. Exactly. Our bodies are amazing. They're designed to 
regenerate themselves and rejuvenate themselves. And look at Lee, he, he says the stroke was quite an education for me. I bet it was. <laughs> and look how much stronger and wiser you are now. And Lee yeah. is, he, he was kind enough to, to reveal his age the other day on his 70 and a half. Lee is stronger and better, a, a better athlete than most 20 year olds. Yeah, he's a gymnast and does all kinds of amazing things yeah. and his body gets stronger all the time. It will. And I was just talking to my mom the other day is if I, if I lift this five pound weight that I don't have in my hand, if I pretend to lift this five pound weight, cause my brain doesn't know any different <laughs> and tomorrow I turn it to six and the next day I put another pound is my muscle going to get stronger? Absolutely. It has to. It has to. But if I go, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. That actually breaks down tissue. Mm -hmm. And that is biological. That is a proven, um, <clears throat> proven fact. And exactly. I like to give these little examples um, just on how the body is amazing. So if I get something in my eye, what does my eye do? Lisa, you can answer. It'll water. It'll water to flush it out. And get red. Um, and if I and puffy, yes, as it repairs. Yes, you, that happened to you. You had a, a black fly fly in your eye the other day. That's right, I did. <laughs> <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> pardon me. If you get something up your nose, such as like a big whiff of vinegar or cayenne pepper, what does your nose do? A chew. It sneezes it out, of course. If you breathe something in as you're eating and you're, you laugh and you pull something down into the wrong pipe, what does it do? <coughs> it coughs it out. Um, if you actually take in a poison, what will the body do? It'll vomit or it'll have diarrhea yeah. or probably a fever. It will vomit it out if it's in the stomach and in the upper part of the intestine. And if it gets down to the small intestine, it'll give you some, it'll actually, it'll slow it down to see if the acid will break it down first. So you'll be constipated. And then at whatever point, you'll have the diarrhea to move it out. So those are just some perfect examples. Then the other, amazing example I always like to share is pregnancy. Imagine <clears throat> the first woman that got pregnant. I don't know who she was, but <laughs> at some point there had to have been the first that carried the first baby. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, can you imagine being that person to like first, I know for me, the first symptom was like this, this twiddling, this little something what's what's going on down there and then it's just bloating we've all been bloated before but then it goes down but bloating and bloating and bloating and then all of a sudden you feel this in your ribs and just like whoa what's that and then nobody's around to tell you like and then all of a sudden you get these cramps like what and like panic can you imagine and then all of a sudden you're like you got your your guy next to you and then this face comes out like, honey, he looks like you. <laughs> like, and like, can you imagine that? But this, but that second person that says, oh yeah, that's normal. Oh yeah, that's normal. Oh yeah, the cramps. Okay, yeah, they're probably gonna last a couple couple hours. But then then you get this this boy, this whatever that comes out. And then the second person and the third person and the fourth person, that's where we're at in the German new medicine mm -hmm. is we're just, we're 40 years, 45 years into this discovery. And it's been, it's there, it's been suppressed and no longer it is, it, the bubble is going out. It's expanding. People are being empowered and systems are changing. Systems are crumbling. And when we, really integrate all the other holistic pieces so we can, number one, learn how to 
um, chill out after the shock. So we don't have these 10 year shocks, which mean 10 year tumors, which means 10 years of healing, which can be pretty intense. Mm -hmm. So the, the, main, the, the main crux here is now that we have this knowledge or once we have this knowledge, we can put out the fires as the shocks come in. Just like, okay, how can I take the higher 5D perspective of this? How can I let this go? How can I change perspective so that I can go into healing tonight and have a twitch or a sneeze or a cough and then it's over? Instead of a seizure, a sinus infection or bronchitis, mm -hmm. if I let it go. So anyway, I don't know where we were, but yeah. here we are back here again. <laughs> so we have Lee that says, Deanna, you just gave away the secret to my strength building program. <laughs> oh, one pound a day. <laughs> we love that. Yeah. Donna's asking, is it the same with heavy metal poisoning? So there is actually poisoning. There you can be poisoned and have symptoms you can have nutritional deficiencies and have some symptoms, but most of the things are caused by biological shocks. So, so if we get yeah. poisoned, will the body work its way out? There's, that's a, a big umbrella question, but most, and this is mostly my belief. I believe we have a liver, we have kidneys to detoxify. So I believe when we take foods in that have toxins on them, our body will handle them. So we know through the GNM, toxins don't cause cancer, period. I will say that flat out. Unexpected shocks start the process that create tumors and whatever they call cancers. So, um, but a true toxicity, there are some toxins that can go up to the brain where you will have different behaviors. And so a true toxicity or poisoning, you can actually do some testing to figure out. And um, the whole German New Medicine is based on brain scans, our CT scans of the brain, where there's hits to these brain relays. And so that's really the only way that we can tell a symptom Example, just to, to give it some, some form, a child that has autism, that has certain behaviors, certain behaviors, um, all mental health behavior, all changes in behavior are basically what we call constellations. We've had a, a series of unexpected shocks that make our behavior different or strange. <laughs> so children that have had I can't digest this or fear in the territory or certain combinations of shocks. A lot of them happen while they're being injected, while they're being held down, scare frights, fear in the territory, I can't digest this. Those can create the symptoms of autism, but also there's an aspect of poisoning also. So the only way that we could really truly find out if it's caused by poisoning is to do a brain scan and um, read the brain scans the way that Dr. Hammer um, taught them and to be able to see if those relays involved are re involved in that behavior. So did I answer the question? So yeah. Yeah. And I think there, there's, there, I'm just going to add my own perspective to that as well, is that we are, so, we are at the soul level, we are the creators. And we have the ability to speak to atoms and molecules, and we have the ability to command energy. And if we had, say, heavy metal poisoning, as Donna is asking, we actually have the ability to transform energies. So it takes, obviously, it takes being 
very, very tuned in to the quantum field so that you can um, communicate to the atoms, but you can literally change the form of atoms. So when we, when we remember who we truly are, we are magicians. We are miracle workers. There's no work involved and there is no miracle involved. It's simply, we have been, we have forgotten. We have been conditioned out of who we truly are and the abilities, the magic that we are able to create instant. That's the ability that we have. That's for me, that's what true mastery and independence is the ability to be the alchemist to change form it's not just about changing metal into gold it's about changing from one form into another from changing one energy to another so we all have that ability and cc is saying i'm so thankful to have met both of you i feel stronger in my body each day the more i trust and let go into knowing that i am health beautiful mm -hmm. absolutely you've been you've been making some amazing transformations <laughs> claudia yeah and what i've also learned is and it goes along with <clears throat> lisa's is that it's really not about what goes on around you mm -hmm. um it's about how you interact with that like I, I live mostly in my little world here and I'm just like happy. And then I forget, I don't watch the news as, as many of us don't. Um, I get enough just kind of scrolling, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and then I go in to the world and go, oh, that's still going on. Okay, this is the role I'm going to play. And I just literally have to put me in the bubble of just like um, one of my mentors, Dr. Alvin de Leon is amazing. He said, you be the flower with the nectar. Mm -hmm. That people, the bee is drawn to you. You just make them wonder like, why is she so happy? Okay, she's drunk. Yeah. <laughs> she's not drunk if you're coming in late. There's a story there. You have to listen to the, to the first part. Um, no, we just have to be. Because truly, if we can just be love, the Course of Miracles teach, teaches that, is anytime we feel attacked, judged, whatever, it's, it's our old stuff. But if we can just turn it in and love, just turn it around and just say, we're just gonna love them anyway. So we can be in any place, regardless of the environment and be peaceful and be loving and kind and nurturing. And so I guess that's our ultimate, ultimate journey. And we don't, I had a little practice with this that I actually didn't want to practice <laughs> where I was led to practice. It was just the wrong time. So I just, I resolved the conflict a different way. Um, but I always keep that in mind. Like Jesus just walked. He just walked in love and, and he turned around and was like, oh, I'm being followed. <laughs> he, didn't yeah. have a sign. he didn't have a license. He just walked and loved and led as example. And so that's, to me, that is independence, is just you walk your walk and wherever you go, you love. Exactly. And, um, and as people are ready, because everybody is on their different journey, they may need another hospital trip. They may need an injury. They may need bleeding coming out of wherever to lead them to their path. So it's not ours to judge. We're all, all on our own journey. Absolutely. We have Delbert saying, learning I, uh, with regard to, um, uh, to independence, learning I am okay and my own master, that the government is trying to take away our own personal freedoms granted to us by source. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the setup of this human game. 
is that we have all been governed and we just assume that we need to be governed. But unfortunately, being governed is not what source has in mind for us. We are I'm not, not here. We're not playing that game anymore. Exactly. <laughs> that's my, that's my, I've been practicing, like if I get pulled over at whatever point, I've been practicing that line. I'm not playing that game or that role anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes over. It will go yeah. over perfectly. <laughs> well, when we look at, when we look at how, how, how it is, I mean, we as souls, have been created by the creator yeah the soul is absolute perfection mm -hmm. there is not a single thing wrong with the soul every soul is individual to have individuated experiences unique experiences not separate experiences no soul is separate from source we are all part of the same source mm -hmm. so every soul is completely unique Every soul is on its completely individual journey and no soul is needed to be governed over. But in this world where dignity and honor and respect have pretty much fallen by the wayside, because when you're looking at the social media and the news, there's really not a whole lot of that going on these days. It's very hard for us to walk in dignity, honor, and respect when we're being herded into, you have to do this, do you have to do this? So it's time for us to stop being the herd and start being heard yeah. for ourselves. Yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. Good. So we have Michelle saying, I'm taking my ball and leaving this outdated and ridiculous game. <laughs> Beautiful take our toys and go home. <laughs> well, I had um, a session. Oh, I'm not going to think of. Um, he basically said, when you're in a dance with someone or something that's not working for you, you don't even have to just do it in a huff. He said, you can gently set the rope down and just say, I'm not playing this anymore. Because when you can say that with gentleness and honor, it's it doesn't come dragging with you so um i'm very sensitive to tone like tone hits me so that's just one little one little tip watch your tone as you're telling your stories and, and as you're writing and um setting your boundaries because setting your boundaries should be done with love like i can't do that right now because blah 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 it just doesn't feel right and you don't even ever have to make an excuse Exactly. Just like this is how I'm most comfortable operating right now. So this is what I'm going to do. And um, I know that setting boundaries is mostly what we end up after we get through the symptoms. That's what we're really left with is people don't know how to set boundaries with other people to stay safe. Yeah. It's to yeah. say either I'm doing this because or I'm not doing that because because everybody has opinions on how they should operate in their world. You should do this. You should go here and you can blah, blah, blah. No, I, I clearly know what I need in here. And so I'd appreciate your respect as I, as I go through my journey. Absolutely. We're, we're definitely yeah. not taught about boundaries. We're yeah. There's a million pieces. Anyway, we could talk all day. Exactly. <laughs> so this has been such a great conversation. We hope that it has stirred some, some thought inside about freedom and independence, what it really truly means. Because when we are independent beings, when we can take care of our own bodies, when we know how to keep ourselves healthy and happy and balanced, we then can be independent from all of these systems that are designed to govern us and tell us what to do and to tell us what's best for us when we know what's best for us and we can stand strong in our own balance and inner well-being 
then we are the masters of our own lives. So Deanna, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure having you here. And for anybody that would like to thank reach out you. to you, please tell us how to how to reach out to and find you. Well, upyourvibe.us gives you an overview of what I do. Um, <clears throat> as many of the holistic healers um, or healing arts, I like to say, because you are your healer. I am my healer. We're just conduits to help you get there quicker. Um, I forgot where I was going, but I'm, oh, forever changing and um, not knowing exactly, but I'm basically creating community in whether it's online or physical. So I just moved to this really small community that I grew up in, like I said, and I have a home that will be a training center, a training ground. So somebody that wants to work intensely for three days can come here and we get to play and learn about food and German new medicine and spirituality and have quiet time and go to the gardens and see the horses and go to the river to swim and paddle. We're in the most beautiful place in the Adirondacks, I believe, trees and water and mountains all around. So that's one of my visions. And there's little houses that are for sale in our little community. So if you're looking for like-minded community, um, that's what I'm gonna, I picture over the course of the next five, 10, I don't know how many years, is as the homes come up for sale, is I have a line of people that say, I wanna come to your community. And so this is a up your vibe in every day. We just, our goal is to raise our vibration every day and make it better today than yesterday or the last moment. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Lifting those those weights of love, yeah. adding a little more love every day, a little more love, a little more love. So we're just, build yay. up that muscle. <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, for, for doing this for the people. Um, you're very welcome. So Please, if you're if you are experiencing some symptoms and you would like to know why they're there, what their what their purpose is, reach out to Deanna at upyourvibe.us. And I am Lisa Warner. I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing, which you can find on Amazon. And my website is connectingutou.com, spelled out in full, connecting Y-O-U-T-O-Y-O-U. And I help you connect to the wisdom of your soul so you can be the master of your own life. You're the master of your own body so that you know how to heal yourself and how to change your life to be the life that you want to lead. So freedom and independence for all of us. Thank you all so much. In, if you're in the U.S., enjoy your Independence Day. Thanks, well, everyone. wherever you are, enjoy your independent Absolutely. day. In, Let's dance. Indeed. Thank Let you. Let freedom all. ring. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you want to sing us out on a song, Deanna? <laughs> I couldn't find the right song. So that's our last note. <laughs> all right. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you all you. so much for joining us. Bye. And we'll see you next week on Solution Sunday.